Right people, welcome to your somewhat regular iPhone SE4 updates. We have some new tidbits that may interest you guys. And so without further ado, let's dive right in. This information comes from credible source Unknowns21 and they are following up their last report from a few weeks ago regarding the SE4 with even more juicy details. Now in case you don't live and breathe Apple leaks like myself, you might not be aware of the fact the rumor mill has been all over the place when it comes to this new iPhone. At first, John Prosser told us the SE4 would be based on the 10R, but then Quo came out of nowhere and said, forget about that, Apple's actually giving us the iPhone 14 design and also would include Apple's first in-house modem. Now this got me buzzing because the iPhone 14 actually has a design that's not from the Stone Ages and would be a huge upgrade over the SE4 with its ginormous forehead and chin. And thankfully for us, Unknowns21 agreed with this, which was exciting news. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. And well, today they go one step further and share some dimensions for the SE4, but it's not exactly revolutionary news because, surprise, surprise, the SE4 based on the iPhone 14 has the same dimensions as the iPhone 14. Here are the specific numbers if some of you are really curious. And really the only difference build wise is that this will be six grams lighter apparently, mainly because the SE4 is gonna have one camera on the back of the device. Now, since we currently don't have a 6.1 inch iPhone with a single lens on the back, this will be the main design change Apple gives us with the SE4 so that of course they can brand it as an all new design in the marketing material. Now with Unknowns 21's previous report, they had told us Apple developed at least five different designs for the camera module. Why do they need that many versions? I have no bloody clue, but anyways, the two main designs they're considering are a flash and a camera encompassed in a single oblong shaped camera module and another design where only the camera ring is raised from the main backplate surface, aka how the current iPhone SE looks. Now in this new report, they seem to suggest Apple's gone with the latter because apparently the flash position is very similar to how it is on the SE3. They also say they're sure of this because it's been explicitly mentioned in Apple's internal documentation and fair enough, I guess, but at the end of the day, I don't care. Who cares about how the camera module looks? Are you gonna be staring at the back of the phone all day? No, so who bloody cares? What gets me tingly all over the place is the fact this all seems to suggest once again, the main lens on this is gonna be the same 48 megapixel snapper from iPhone 15. Now this would be a game changer. This easily would make up for the fact there's only one lens on the back of the device because as I'd mentioned when checking out the iPhone 15, the Tux crop with the much larger main lens is basically as good as a telephoto lens and the ultra wide on the regular models is super soft anyways. So I'm totally fine with one sensor on the back that's 48 megapixels. The SE4 as one expects is gonna use the same aluminum chassis as the iPhone 14, which is fine by me because I prefer it over stainless steel and titanium any day. Those get all kinds of gross fingerprints, aluminum doesn't. And also there's been multiple prototypes in a black or midnight shades. So Unnoticed 21 is confident we're gonna see that as one of the colors for the SE4, but to be honest, it doesn't take a genius to work that out because every iPhone comes in black. However, what I do wonder about is whether we're gonna see multiple color options or not. In the past, when it came to their bog standard base models, Apple would nearly always offer the most boring shades because apparently if you cheapen out, you're not allowed to have fun colors. But that sentiment has changed as of late, thankfully, because the MacBook Air comes in midnight, which the Pro doesn't have. And the base iPad has vibrant shades of yellow, blue, and pink, which are leagues above the pastel shades other iPads have that are basically gray in most lighting. So maybe the iPhone SE4 also gets some fun shades. I'm really hoping we get something other than black, white, and red. Oh wait, I just realized there was never a red iPhone 15 and unless we see that launch during March, maybe the product red iPhone is done. Timothy seemingly done being generous and I guess they're done giving money to charity so instead of reds, maybe they give us something a little fancier like an orange instead. I would love to see an orange iPhone. I know we got coral, but that's not a true orange iPhone. Now there will be two main features the SE4 gains from more expensive iPhones. And the first thing is Type-C. Now to be honest, 
I don't think Apple is including this because they suddenly want to be generous. It's because the European government's mandating this and is forcing them to include this on all their phones. And so without a question, the SC4 is getting this. On Nets 21 also says the action button's coming to the SC4 and I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, how is the SC4 getting this when the regular iPhone 15 hasn't got it? That makes no sense. This leak is fake. Well, calm down, if anything, I do think this is legit, but the fact we're getting an action button could signify we're not getting this anytime soon. Because yes, if the SC4 was to release in a few months, in early 2024, I don't think it would get a feature that, of course, more expensive iPhones don't even have. And so the fact it has an action button is evidence it's releasing in early 2025 instead. The regular iPhone 16 should get the action button by then, and also remember the iPhone 14, this time next year is going to be 599, and so I can see the SC4 replacing that in the range because I'm sure there will be a price increase for all these new features. There is no way this will be staying at $439. And by the way, Unknowns21 once again says it should have the same OLED panel as iPhone 14, so do not worry, it should not be downgraded to LCD. And actually, there's evidence of this already because suppliers have begun fighting each other to get juicy panel orders from Apple because they could hit the jackpot if they secure a deal with my boy Tim. And obviously, this being the cheap iPhone, it's going to be using BOE and Tynama displays instead of Samsung's high-quality panels. But hopefully, there isn't a big difference. I'm guessing it won't get as bright as newer iPhones, but that's to be expected. I just want it to function like a good OLED display and it shouldn't look like this out of the box. Another exciting aspect about the iPhone 14 is the fact it should be the first iPhone to introduce the in-house modems. The original plan was to debut this with iPhone 16, but then Apple realized that making modems is not easy, and so before giving it to their very expensive flagships, where subpar modems would piss many consumers off, it's better they test the waters with the cheap iPhone, and once it becomes comparable to Qualcomm's offerings, they can then introduce it to their flagships. Also, this has been supported by the fact that number one, Quo recently told us we should see Apple's in-house modems launch in 2025, which of course is when the SE4 should release. And also number two, Qualcomm did tell us they're gonna be supplying Apple modems till 2026. So I'm assuming Apple's highest end iPhones are gonna continue using Qualcomm modems for a while. Of course, to save their reputation, Unknowns21 does emphasize that this is all pre-production information and things can change. But so far guys, I am hyped for this. Even for sub $600, the specs we've heard so far are pretty solid. And compared to the abomination the SE3 was, I'm hoping the SE4 actually delivers. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.